your burritas. You want to you want to heat your skillet. I've got it to where I need it to be, so I'm kind of leaving it there. Um, I am gonna grab my trusty my this thing and uh, slap some of that right on there. Now I'm actually gonna turn my burner back on and grab my other my other. Where'd my other trusty does that thing go? Because you can't have a burrito without sour cream. Stir that up nice and good. Just a couple of dollops on there. I'm just glad I don't have Gordon Ramsay jumping down my throat. It's the most god awful thing I've ever seen in my life. You Gingus Christ. Yeah. That's Gordon Ramsay for you. Having said that, I would love to try some Gordon Ramsay's cooking. Can't have the burrito without a little bit of hot sauce. My favorite right now is my um, sriracha. You got to do that. This is my one of my good friend Tim's favorite sauces. <laughs> Typically. Typically, when you put when you put hot sauce on something, you put it on the entire thing, right? This kid puts it on every single bite. Never seen it done before. So you fold the two sides in like this, okay? Now, the next step can be tricky, but what you do is, I don't know if you can see this, but you kind of fold it over and use the other parts of your hand to stop it from folding outward fold it in and you grab it and you push it down in sometimes you need to fold these little puppies in then you kind of like pinch it all in you kind of like roll it start the roll and then you finish the roll and some of it came out just a little bit but that's a pretty darn good looking burrito then what you do Without any oil or anything on the pan, I just a straight dry pan. I put it on my skillet. Just kidding, do it my way. Um, I know. <laughs> Look at this kid. Look at him. I love you, but you're, you got you got hairs. You got little tiny hairs all up in your face. Yeah, Jack. A little cool little trick. Whenever you seem to open these, some of it tends to like splurt out. What I always like to do is squeeze it just a little bit and then close it. So when you open it, the first instinct is to pull air in instead of push air out. I'm going to use a little bit of different sauce for this one. This is uh, ta tapatio. See how it's starting to get nice and brown? What happens is when you put this on there and this gets heated, it kind of like st sticks to itself, which is cool. Had. And then, oops, that's the wrong place for it. This one is here. And then, you take this. This in there. Wipe up the edge. Because we got a little bit dirty. Just got a little bit of dirtiness on it. Cooking. But I was working over here. I was doing stuff. Now if I was cooking over here, if I was preparing over here, that would have been fine. But I mean, this would even have been fine. But never, ever leave a stove unattended.
I'm gonna make some coffee. I always buy the whole beans and I always put it in the freezer. If I buy the grounds, which this one is already ground, I still put it in the freezer. It preserves the coffee flavor more. Yeah, let's go. We're gonna percolate my coffee. I've already got it filled with water. Now, we just gotta get the coffee made. And we're gonna do that. This, this. How do you like my handy dandy tripod? You don't want it to be perfectly ground. You want it to be a little bit chunky, kind of. A little bit like that, make it look like Oreos. And then, um, and I always like to try and cover the hole. See this thing? It's got a hole right in the middle. It's really hard to see because it's dark. But if I do that, you can see it. It's dark. And that goes all the way down to the bottom. So if you don't cover it, you'll make a big mess. This is our percolator. This is what we're going to be making the coffee with. So that's the kettle. You got this. I don't know what the proper terms are. I'm just going to give them obvious type names, okay? So this is going to be the straw, the stem, if you will, forces water from the bottom up to the top. You see where I'm going with this? Stepping in what I'm smelling here. Right, so there's that. There's one more piece. There's this. So what happens is water comes down from here, shoots up the stem, it, and it gets hot, so it shoots up the stem and then hits this thing right here. It's just a piece of plastic. And it comes out and it goes through here which the coffee is in here, remember? Okay, kind of acts as like a distributor. Put that in. Then basically what happens is, it starts automatically, as soon as you plug it in. Um, and she's on. So basically what's gonna happen is, we're gonna do this. Water's gonna come through. Water's gonna come through here and then go down. It's gonna come up and then go back down. And you'll see it. There you go. My friend Matthew Hewitt's coming home. Uh, he'll be here soonish, I think. Um, and then uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna hang out. Might uh, might interview him. I might not. I want to interview him for his trip because he got to spend a year over there in China teaching at university. So that is a huge honor and an amazing privilege and accomplishment to say that you've done so. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, interview him. 
but who knows? We're gonna find out. Anyway. Hey, I'm gonna do my impression of Dennis for you when somebody comes into their house. <laughs> is that really what he does? Yeah. Wow, the place is new too. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. I like it. I like the setup. Thank you, man. Yeah, I here. Thanks, bro. It's way longer. And then there's the gimbal. Oh, hey. What better place than hide it than behind a chair? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I could have known wow, he is fat. Yeah, they fed him more than twice a day. Oh, they had to. Huge. Yeah, oh. first. Quite chair. Sure, that's ten. Uh, this is. Equi Chan one and one is about you know a seventh of a dollar roughly. Oh my gosh! I love this this part of like travelers meeting up and oh, yeah. giving gifts. And... You look great. The hair looks really good. Thanks, man. Yeah, seriously. You look fresh. Frosh. It was worth it. Oh yeah. Do you feel like it was worth it? I feel like it was totally worth it. The crazy thing about their currency, the stock exchange, the exchange rate. Yes. Changes hourly. Yes. It's unbelievable. Yes. Very like central trading hub. Like that's always the role that it played. That's so, awesome. So this whole area is very Arab. It's very, it's, uh, for example, this province is a majority Muslim population. So there's, it just feels very Central Asian or Middle Eastern. Yeah. That's how it feels. Very You don't cool. feel like you're in China? China. No, not at all. Yeah. Or India. I mean, it feels kind of like you're in, maybe you're in Pakistan, but maybe you're also in like Afghanistan or something because there's just lots of, I brought you a uh, big old sack of, uh, <laughs> there is no sack. They used to be sacked, if you will. Right. Contained within a sack. Yeah. This one looks uh, FDA approved. I will, I will tell you what this one, because these are actually genuine and good. <laughs> But these ones are your good old run of the mill traditional just Chinese, snacky Chinese snacks. Just like pawn Chinese, just snack a -rooski. So let's go through. We'll start normal, we'll get weird. Okay, this one. A preserved little squishy egg uh, strip. Yes, a little spicy, and I believe this is similar to Latiao. Latiao is like a bean curd jerky. I believe this is Latiao, but it doesn't call it Latiao, but it looks like Latiao. So it's kind of, it's made from like, uh, The fact that flour. the air has gone out of that scares me a little bit. I don't know if they're supposed to be, if it's supposed to be vacuum sealed or not, or. Um, this one, uh, is some sort of beef. Okay, so this is just beef. Okay. And I don't know what this one is. All right, let's get weird. I think these are chicken entrails. I think. Uh, vacuum sealed though, so. Um, have you eaten all of this already? No. A lot of these I haven't eaten because I tried a bunch of Chinese snacks and I think they're terrible. This is a kind of. Um, this one is, I believe, some sort of fish like scale or, or skin or something. Foreskin? No, no, no. Kind of chicken thing. Um, I'm not sure what this one is. I have no clue what's in this. It's just <laughs> now maybe it might. You know, honestly, I don't know. So that's as good of a guess as any. Have you have you eaten everything in there? No. Before? No. <laughs> you want to join me? No, no, I do not. The first flight. This is. I'll just keep it very quick. First flight got canceled. But they didn't tell me. And I was flying. Now, I don't live in Nanjing. I live in Manshan, which is an 18 minute train ride away. I have to do trains to fast train. If I drive, you can't drive. And I didn't have a car. Okay, so, so I'm in Xinjiang on that last trip. It's the west of China. I need to fly back uh, to the east coast to Nanjing so that I can. We're looking at the trains, and I'm not able to get back to my place in the morning. I have a car that's supposed to pick me up at my apartment to take me to the airport in Nanjing. I am in Nanjing because my stuff is still there. No, like my, my main stuff. I just went to Xinjiang with like a backpack. Spend the night in Nanjing. In the morning, uh, I get up at like 5 a.m., take a train back to Manchang, my city. 
get my stuff, close it up, I'm like going, 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 say goodbye to a couple people, get in the car that brings me back to Nanjing, to the airport. I walk up to the people at the airport, I've got all my stuff, and I've even gotten a confirmation from my airline saying like, good, but actually this leg from Nanjing to Beijing was being flown by a separate airline. Not the main confirmation. It was a related airline, like one that they were partnered with. So I go up and I was like, "Here's my stuff," and she's like, "Your flight's uh, not flying today." I was like, "What?" And she said, "Oh yeah, it's uh, basically that flight was canceled because of weather in Beijing." And I was like, well, "Why was I informed? I got a confirmation." And they go, "We informed all of our Chinese passengers on our local airline that you're flying, but not you." But I had to pay a ton more money because. Of taxi and everything I had to take way more expensive. So I did that. Next morning, flew to Beijing. That flight was delayed. Not to Beijing was delayed. I already had a tight lane. I already it was an hour and a half in Beijing. In Beijing, you have to do customs, security, everything. Um, yes, we leaving the country. You had to do customs. I don't know why. It's very strange in Beijing. Oh my god! And now. My layover is literally going to be 20 minutes because of how much we're delayed. So I'm on the flight, we're talking to the, the, the hostesses, the, uh, and I'm like, all right, what can I do? Can you help me here? And so I was like, I really got to make this tight uh, layover. And she was like, well, we can move you to the front of the plane. But there's some people behind me who are like, oh, we're on that same flight as you. And they were older, and uh, I asked the lady, and she was like, well, we have two seats up there, so I was like, you guys both take them. There's a couple. I'm sprinting through, I actually see them again, and I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll help you. We have to change terminals and all this stuff, and I'm going as fast as I can. I'm talking to all these people, and I'm like, look, our flight leaves like now, you have to let us through. So we're getting through security, they're like shoving us through, we make it. I'm literally sprinting at every chance, getting them cars to go on to, you know, we all this crazy stuff is happening. Changed terminals, went through security, went through customs, and uh, found our new game in 15 minutes. Later I find out that my bags obviously do not make it. But I asked so many people along the way, I was like, please, like, I was like, I have my bag tags, look at the number, can you make sure they make it? And they were like, of course, of course, of course, I didn't make it, of course. Uh, us three could get on that plane, going to work. So that was delayed a little bit. The flight. Uh, so then we have a tight labor layover in Newark. So I'm trying to sprint through. I have to do more, you know, security and customs again in Newark. And I get through that, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna miss my plane. I arrive there. That plane is then delayed uh, three hours. That flight was delayed another three hours. Eventually we took off, made it, and then I had to wait uh, four, four or five days to get my bags. Yeah, and they kind of broke one of them. Of course. But I got it.